طيب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله um, actually this is a continuation of what I presented earlier uh, this is a practicing guideline appraisal by agreeing so, uh, uh, this is almost like a flow chart that tells you uh, initially how to rate your <coughs> items in a, in a given guideline so the guideline usually if you want to appraise it you have to have six domains and then uh, those domains having items, for instance, the first domain has three items. The total items is 23. So first domain is scope and purpose, <coughs> it has three items. Stakeholders and involvement, another three items. Uh, regular of development has eight items. And then next to it is clarity of presentation, three items. Applicability, four items. Finally, editorial independence, two items. Uh, how you practice it, uh, you need to evaluate each given item in each domain by giving it a score according to the rating. And then you have to count what is the total obtained score by each domain. And then uh, this, the calculation is here, I will take you to the details. The calculation is the obtained score out of each domain minus the minimum and divided by the maximum obtained, <coughs> possible, sorry, maximum possible <coughs> minus the minimum possible. Let me give you an example. Uh, I will take you to an actual example of abrasing the Clostridium difficile infection by adults and children. So let us go to the guideline. This is the guideline. This is the title of the guideline. The clinical practice guidelines for Clostridium difficile infection in adults and children. It, it was 2017 updated by the Infection Disease Society of America and the Society of Healthcare Epidemiology of America as well. So this is the guideline. Uh, before going into the details of the guideline, if you would like to embrace this guideline, you have to have the tool for it. So the best tool to, uh, to, to embrace any guideline is a green instrument. Now, now you can see the details. If you want to embrace any given guideline, uh, the abrasal tool is an instrument formed from one to seven scale. So one means that you strongly agree to, uh, to, to what is being required to be available in that guideline. And by, st uh, by strongly disagree, I mean that you couldn't find that required information in that guideline. So there is no given information, or at least the concept is very poorly reported. Now, the other extreme is strongly agree, which is seven, to give him seven in that given item. So it, he has to be providing it in an explicit and ex exceptional and outstanding full criteria in order to obtain the seven score. Uh, minded the, the range from two to six is something not fully addressed. Uh, criteria are somewhat missing and uh, partial presentation of the required elements. Now, uh, let me just leave this uh, score and take you back to the guideline. Now, uh, have a look at this guideline. This guideline, it is a bit lengthy, 40 plus, actually nearly 50 pages. I mean, this is the title, and these are the developers. And uh, underneath uh, the location of each developer from where, from where he is coming or from which affiliation or institution. And then there is a brief introduction. I highlighted some areas. I will come back to this. Now, have a look at this wonderful part of this guideline. Executive summary. This is a summary of the whole guideline. Sometimes they call it a short version of a guideline. This short version tells you everything about this guideline, but in a short term. Uh, I.e., if you go through, you'll find that this is, uh, this is the summary. You have an introduction where they tell you why they did this uh, guideline. This is to improve the diagnosis and the management of cholesterol deficit infection uh, in adults and in children. In the previous guideline, if you go back to the title, this is uh, actually an updated guideline of uh, 2010 guideline. Okay. If you go further in the, only in the summary, you'll find that uh, they tell you that in this part that if you want the, the full detail, you go to the full text. So ideally, to embrace the guideline, you have to have the full text with all attachments and uh, <clears throat> any appendices being attached to. Let us finish this summary or the executive summary. So after the introduction, then they tell you about the guidelines, recommendations. So they started with epidemiology. I will just scan it very quickly for you. This is how you rate uh, the evidence and link it to the recommendations. 
Okay. Um, mind is that, I mean, some of the questions will be coming later on that they have to tell us if there are any limitations in the resources to apply such recommendations in any given guideline. Now, the epidemiology, the benefits one was for the adults, but this one is for the pediatrics, and this is the addition, which is the new part of this guideline. Furthermore, after epidemiology, they go to the diagnosis. Okay. After diagnosis, they will take you to the diagnosis of the pediatric considerations. Again, this is the additional part of the new guideline. And then the infection prevention and control. Right. And then the treatment part. Uh, probably the, the, that's the end of it. Now, once they finish this summary, they take you to the full, actually this is the treatment for the pediatrics at the end of it. And then they will start the introduction of the full guideline. So this is just like a quick review of taking you to the summary. Now let me take you to the, to the tool I developed. Now, to embrace any given part of a guideline, I prefer personally to use the so-called calculator. So I have provided you with, I mean, the so-called demo calculator. So I will be using this for uh, this practice and for this example. For instance, if you go to domain one, for instance, it asks you about, is there any uh, an overall objective for the development of this guideline? Yes or no? I've put here where to look instead of uh, using the guideline. Let me take you back to the, to the instrument. The instrument helps you in, you see, where to look. It tells you where to look. So I just put it here for you. So you can see, I mean, for instance, if you want, if you want to answer this question, that is, is there any for all objective for this guideline? I mean, the requirement is specifically described. Now, if you go to page one, introduction line two to, to five, let's just go there. Okay. Very quickly. Now, okay, I can just drag it like this, yes. Okay. So, so this is the objective of this guideline, to update the 2010 clinical practice guideline on cholesterol deficit infection in adults, and then they added the pediatric part of it. I mean, if you want to assess this part as an information given to answer this question that there is an overall specific and explicit mention, for me, I score it five. So it is there, it's somewhat satisfactory, but it is not explicit, explicit and specifically described. Now, if you want uh, more addition, you can go to line one in the executive summary as well. Let us go back to the executive summary. Have a look at this. I mean, in the summary, they've mentioned that intended, so this guideline is intended to improve the diagnosis and the management of cholesterol deficit infection and in others and in children. Okay, so you, you find the answer, but it is incorporated in the introduction, in the executive summary, and so on and so forth. That's why I scored it five. Let us go to item two in domain one. Domain one is about the scope and purpose. The, the health question covered by the guideline is, again, specific. Okay, what, what they mean that uh, is there any clinical question being addressed to be answered by this guideline? Again, um, if you go to the whole guideline, you can find it partial, partially mentioned in the epidemiology, diagnosis, prevention, and treatment. However, if you want the specifics, you can go to you know, pages from one to eight, questions and their main headings. I will just give you a glance of it. Okay, have a look at this. Uh, you, you are looking for questions to be answered, right? Now, have a look at this. This guideline recommendations for cholesterol differences in fiction. Under epidemiology, they put a few questions. How are these infections case best defined and so on and so forth so in each part they put the specific questions to be answered i can take another example if you like here for instance epidemiology for pediatric consideration <clears throat> what is the recommendation okay for clostridium deficit infection surveillance strategy for pediatric <clears throat> institutions and so on and so forth therefore my evaluation for this question is again five so the answers are here in this guideline uh, let us go to the third part. Third part of this uh, domain talks about a specific population to be defined by this guideline. Uh, again, actually, I could understand uh, that this guideline is um, meant by the diagnosis and management of cholesterol deficit infections in adults and children, but, but, but there are more, more, no more details. Ideally, they should uh, specify that uh, this population is meant to, or this guideline is, this guideline is meant to be addressed to this group of population. Now, uh, going to the second part, which is the second domain, stakeholders uh, involvement. Okay. 
Now, the guideline development group. So is there any specifications for the guideline development groups? Let us go to the guideline. I mentioned earlier, if you remember in the first <coughs> page, these are the developers. So what is available is their names and their locations from which institutions they are coming. Uh, okay, what, what is required to answer it? You go to the guide and let me show you what is required here. Okay, I'm just quickly going, taking you down. Now this is the first domain. These are the specifications. Always you have to have in one hand the guideline and the an instrument in the other hand. Okay. Here you go. See, this is what is required. They require the name, the description, sorry, the discipline, the institution, the location, and then the member's role in this guideline development. And uh, uh, <clears throat> potential candidates are included in, in the relevant clinicians, and one methodological expert should be there. So just uh, just to give you, a, I mean, a, a quick look on this example. So we have the guideline, we have the instrument as a tool. Let me just uh, wrap it up in the without going back to the guideline so stakeholders this is the way you raise them this these are the developers the most important part which they lack actually that uh, the development group should have a patient representative i mean i couldn't find a patient representative in this guideline although it is a wonderful guideline i i, I will give it an extra mark of excellent but in this part i could not raise them more than two actually even you can even raise them even less and by the way each guideline should be appraised by more than two appraisers, usually preferably uh, two to three or four, right? So th this is the way you appraise it. I, I can send you this uh, guide to appraise the, all the remaining parts of the guideline. And uh, the most important part is the, and let me just tell you that what you do, you just uh, add up those um, uh, marks and uh, scores for each domain, and then it ends up with, with 15. If you apply the equation, I've told you that which is, the, the obtained minus minimum divided by the maximum minus the minimum. Uh, that's why I prefer to do it electronically. And let me show you how it works electronically. This is the, oh, wonderful. You see, have a look at this. Uh, this is the electronic calculator for green instrument. Once you put the marks, it counts and calculates the rate. If you want to add another appraiser, for instance, this one, let him score it six here, for instance, and this is four, for instance. And then this is five. Okay, have a look. Okay. It sums it up and it gives you the calculation right in front of you. Ideally, you have to have four appraisals for this guideline. Okay, let us go back to uh, the, the, the so-called the demo. I call it a demo. Okay, now th these are the scores for the second domain. These are the scores for the third domain, and these are the totals. I, mean, I want just to, I want you just to see the do the totals to tell you how to overall uh, evaluate this guideline. Now, clarity of presentation. Again, again, you need to read all the specific uh, domain items, and then you see how to evaluate them by this guide, and then you give it a mark, and then you, these are the totals. Now, how to evaluate the guideline in general after you finish those six domains? Okay, here you go. Uh, th this is the calculator. Uh, if you want to do it manually, you still you can do. If it is one appraiser, you see the, what is the total obtained the score by each domain minus the minimum. What is the minimum? The minimum you remember the scale was from one to seven, so the minimum is one. If it is three, if it is three items, so the minimum is three. Okay, and this is a uh, thing shown here. Yes, I can show you here the details here. Have a look at, have a look at this. Okay, here you go. Can can just increase it a little bit. Okay. Oh, this is the example. So the the, the obtained score was fifteen minus three, which is the minimum, and then divided by the total maximum <coughs> minus the minimum. The maximum is. 3 by 7 is 21, minus the minimum is 3, so it will be 12 by 18, and it will be 66. Instead of this manual calculation, I always prefer to do it electronically by this wonderful calculator. Whatever number of appraisers you have, still it can count and calculate. Now, to just to end up my presentation by telling you that uh, the overall, you have a look at uh, all domains, you see, this is 80, this is 60, this is 89, 88, and this is uh, 67, and this is 67 as well. So to decide about this guideline overall, you need to tell the readers that this guideline is uh, rejected or accepted or accepted with modifications. If four domains or more scored <clears throat> less than 50, this is a rejected guideline. 
uh, you can accept with modifications if four domains if, uh, if four domains or or more are scoring 40 to 60 uh, but uh, sorry this is it has, it has to be list and uh, you you, ha you have to accept uh, uh, any guideline if you have four domains or more scoring more than 60 by looking at this guideline uh, it, it is actually all of all domains are scoring more than 60 so this is a wonderful guideline you can accept the only reservation for this guideline is patient representation which is not there or I might not be able to find it. So if you are specialized in this guideline and treating uh, this colostridium deficit infection, you might be finding uh, the answer to this. So that's why we prefer to abrase any guideline by two to three to four abrasions so they can wrap it up and find a better judgment for this guideline. Uh, at, at the end of my talk, I'd like to express my thanks and appreciation to the Russia, to the Fadi group in general. Uh, I think that I did not take more than my time. Hopefully that you enjoy it, and I can send you all these uh, files so you can revise them at any time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bakr, for your nice presentation. Really, I mean, appreciate it. Inshallah, Rabbi Nabarak, for having me here. But in fact, we are going to the stage where we learn how to critique and understand the measures of clinical practice guideline. I think this will be useful for any patient in the field of clinical practice. Thank you very much for your presentation. الله يكرمك انا حاسس لكم الملفات دي كلها ان شاء الله وحتشوفوها بس اتمنى تزودوني بال بالاصوات الحلوه دي بالبرزنتيشن كلها عشان نستمتع بيها ونستفيد اكيد ان شاء الله باذن الله اكيد ان شاء الله دكتور شكرا لك شكرا لك شكرا لك شكرا لك شكرا لك